This is my new autonomous mobile robot version 2. This AMR got few updates compared to version 1. If you haven't watched my previous video on autonomous mobile robot, click on the i button to watch it now. The major update is the motors. These are BLDC hub motors with HAL encoders. These BLDC motors are controlled using O-Drive controller. The odometry is now very accurate with the BLDC motors and O-Drive controllers which in turn is making the localization of the robot to be precise. The brain of the robot is same as in version 1. It is Jetson Nano 4GB variant. All the USB ports are occupied with LIDARs, O-Drive controller and Arduino. This Arduino uses ROS serial to communicate with ROS. It controls the LED strip that changes color based on the state of the robot. I've also added this button interface to stop and start the robot while moving towards a goal or to wait at a wire point. This is a addressable RGB LED strip attached around the robot. Power source of the robot is a 24V 10AH lithium ion battery. Now coming to lidars, usually in bigger robots, it becomes challenging to get a full 360 degree view using a single lidar. So I've used two lidars, one in the front and one at the back to get the full 360 degree view around the robot. Let me show you how the laser data is being published from each lidar. As we can see here, there are two laser topics being published, scan and scan1. This is the front lidar and this is the back one. If I disable the back lidar, there is only 180 degree view in the front. Now the robot could only detect the obstacles which are in the front. Now let's disable the front lidar and enable the back one. Here is the other 180 degree view from the back lidar. Now it could detect the obstacles which are at the back. Using these two lidars, the robot can now detect all the obstacles around it, giving it a full 360 degree view. Now let's see this AMR in action. Using this interactive marker, I will ask the robot to go through three goal locations. First one, second one, and back to home location. The robot will wait for five seconds at each goal location before starting to the new one. As the three locations are set, now let's start the job. As the robot starts moving, the color of the LED changes to green, indicating that the robot is moving towards the goal location. Once the goal location is reached, the color of the LED turns yellow, indicating the robot is idle. As said, it waits for 5 seconds at each goal. Going to second goal. Going back to home location. Now I have placed an obstacle in robot's path such that the robot cannot avoid it. Let's see what happens.
The color of the LED starts blinking red and green, indicating that the robot is stuck and not able to plan a valid path to the goal without colliding the obstacle. Now let me remove the obstacle from the robot's path. Once the obstacle is gone, the robot finds a valid path and starts moving to the goal. Let's go for another round. As we can see, there is an obstacle in the path of the robot which can be avoided to reach the first goal. Let's see how the robot behaves now. This time, it politely avoided the obstacle and planned a path towards the goal. Ok, now I will use the stop button to stop the robot at this waypoint. The LED color turns blue indicating that the robot is stopped by the user. This button interface comes to handy when the user wants the robot to wait at a particular waypoint for a longer duration. Now the robot will not move to the next location until the start button is pressed. Let's press the start button. Now the robot is ready and started moving to the next goal. We can use the stop button to stop the robot even when it is actively moving towards the goal. Let me stop it. Once the start button is pressed, robot will resume going to the same goal location. Job done. Coming to the code of this robot, the navigation stack is almost same as the version 1, except the motor controlling and usage of two leaders. For order controller, I have used this ROS O drive package. This package provides APIs in C to send commands to O drive controller. So I have used this package to write hardware interface node. Now coming to reading two LIDAR's data, we just have to add an extra obstacle layer plugin in cost map files. To do so, we have to define an observation source for second LIDAR. With its scan topic name, scan1 in my case. Now add a new obstacle layer plugin with the newly added source. Hope you like this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos on robotics and ROS. For more stuff, visit my website www.rosroboticslearning.com. Thanks for watching.